On this episode of Sawdust, we are going to be replacing and repairing a pork cashier on our oceanfront historic project. So this pork cashier was built uh, about 100 years ago, and uh, it has sort of rotted from the bottom up. They did a really nice job with the copper roof, so the roof deck is in good shape. But the beam that supports the whole thing is crumbling. So the uh, beam is round and they did it in segmented pieces. We're going to do it a little bit differently because we have some experience with this. We're going to laminate a beam in that curve and hopefully that will last another 100 years. So stay tuned. I'm Jeff Sweener, President and CEO of Sweener Builders. For more than 30 years, we've been building coastal homes meant to last 100 plus years. Our team of talented craftsmen and design professionals are committed to delivering extraordinary results through the best practices and techniques in custom home building. Our final product has to be beautiful, highly efficient, and use advanced building science to stand up to the harsh coastal conditions. On this season of Sawdust, we're pulling back the curtain to give you an inside look at what we do. So we're over at the historic oceanfront property. We've got another interesting project that we're gonna be working on. Uh, this port cachere which is a character defining feature of the house. So a port cochere is uh, different than a portico. A portico is a covered pedestrian walkway. This is where the cars would come in, drop your guests off underneath um, a covered space. So really you wanna bring this uh, element back. So as you can see, substantial amounts of rot. You'll see that it's starting to drop. Water has been coming in for years. So we're gonna have to cut all that rot. Some of these columns that are not historic, that were shored up probably in the 80s, just kind of holding it together. But the ceiling is in, in good condition. Here's, here's actually one of the old, like, temporary fixed columns that they'd put in in the 80s. So our plan is to come in and fix the structure, the perimeter, the curved beams. Since this is the main focal point of the house, really bring that entry back up to where it was originally. We're at the oceanfront property. As you can see behind me, we have a beautiful temporary structure that we're using to house our curved beam project. Now, Behind there is a port share that was built in 1911, and we are tasked with replacing the structural members of it. In episode one, you guys saw us tenting the oceanfront property to replace the failing EPDM roof. And what we've done is we took those eye joists, we made a 16 by 20 platform, tented it in, and we plumbed it with heat so that we can build this port share beam. Rain or shine to be able to work on this thing and not have to worry about outside influences. So what we did is we figured out what our radius was. We took the overall measurement out to out and in to in, and we found our center. We figured out we need our radius to be 109 and a quarter inches. So once that happened, we did the same thing that the carpenters that built this house did in 1911. We took a trammel and it's fixed at one end with a screw and you have a pencil on the other end. Once you secure it and you know what your radius is, then you can swing out and you can draw out the inside curvature of your beam. So once we did that, we had a line to go to for when we put our jig together and place all of our uprights. Once our jig was in place and we had the innermost layer of our jig covered in 3 8 wacky wood, we brad nailed that initial layer of 3 8 onto our uprights and we wove it all the way across. After we did that, started mixing up epoxy, to five to one ratio, and once that's mixed, you have 25 minutes to use it. We like to air on 21 minutes because it's a, the pot life is very delicate. So we always air on the side of caution. Once that's mixed up, we have two guys rolling the epoxy on each layer. We're doing two layers at a time. We cover them in epoxy on both sides. Put them together. Lay it down, you cover this side. 
and then one of the other guys is rolling it out on our initial layer of our jig. Once everything is thoroughly coated in West System Epoxy, we take that skin, we walk out around to the side of our jig, and we adhere it to the initial layer. Then we screw them in to our first skin of the jig and into our upright members. And then each layer after that, it's the same method. This epoxy process is multi-day. Today, we got our initial layer on and two layers after that. Tonight, we'll let it cure up. And tomorrow, we'll come back and we'll put the other 11 layers onto our first three. After that, it needs to cure for five to seven days. So it's as strong as possible when we go to actually install it into the pole chair. As you can see, we've finished our curved beam. It's 15 layers of 3 8 plywood and West System Epoxy. West System Epoxy cures to 80% strength in 24 hours and 100% in five to seven days. Now with this being in a climate controlled room, sitting at about 80 degrees, after six days, we're extremely confident in the fact that it will be 100% cured. So as you can see right now, there are some discrepancies in our top layer here. And so what we'll end up doing is power planing it all down, and then we're gonna cover the entire beam in one more layer of epoxy. That way it ensures that it's 100% water resistant and unpenetrable, so we do not face the same issues as the previous beam where it had rotted out over time. Next, we'll start demolition on the existing beam, getting all of the rotted wood and doing all, all of our internal repairs so that we are ready to lift this in place next week. In the existing portico share, there is a concealed copper gutter and also wooden gutter that's underneath it. Our client would like to maintain as much original features of the portico share. So what we'll end up doing is taking our multi-tools and cutting the fascia just under the crown. And remove all of the rotted fascia that's there. that we have access to all of the framing so we can put our beam up and secure it and then finish our trim around it. Now that it's Tuesday and our beam is fully cured, today we'll remove our jig Power plane the top so it's nice and flat. And then we're gonna cover the entire beam in one more coat of epoxy so it's completely watertight. So now that our jig has been removed and it's been power planed, we covered it in one more coat of epoxy to ensure that it's completely watertight and impenetrable by the elements. Now for the next 24 hours, it'll sit in this 80 degree room and fully cure and we shall install it after that. Welcome back to the oceanfront property. As you can see, looks a little bit different than last time you guys were here. Our beam's now all completed and we're ready to lift it into place today. Now that the beam is ready and our tent is dismantled, we have staging set up all around the existing portico share. And we have a couple ramps to help our loading process. 
So what we're gonna end up doing is putting our beam on the forks of the lull. Sliding it up into position. Raising it in. And then we'll plumb up the marks for our posts so that that beam will sit half on the posts. Then we will lower it. We'll make our cuts. And we'll put it back up. Here where it will live for the next 100 years. Now, this radius beam is up into position in our portico chair, and our LVLs will also butt right into it. When lifting large beams into the air on a construction site, there's a couple important things that you need to have. Have everything prepped and ready to go. You have your sawzalls, your skill saws, you have a square. You have any sort of staging that you need to move and shuffle while you're doing it so that everything can go smoothly. You also need clear and concise communication for things to go smoothly. We're flush. You need to have a lot of trust with your operator. So when you're in the middle of lifting it, there is no fire drills. So as you can see, we've successfully lifted our radius beam into place. With Ryan Sweener controlling the machine, me signaling to him, and the other three guys assisting, everything went nice and smooth. So now that it's up, it's secured into place, and we have temporary legs bracing it up, we can come back, fine tune the pitch of the portico chair, and then lay it to bed forever. So today we're back at this oceanfront property and we're getting ready to trim out our beam in some AZEC. We've done all of our prep work to make sure that the original thickness of our beam stays the same. So as you can see behind me, we have spacer blocks on the sides and below to maintain that original thickness, as well as keeping it nice and straight. And we've put in our posts that will now live there for the next 100 years. We've also shimmed out everything so it's nice and plumb and level. One unique thing about doing a project like this is when you're taking apart buildings that were built well over 100 years ago, you get to see all of the marks from the previous craftsmen. We also like to leave our marks. So on this project, I had the idea of getting this plaque made on our CNC machine where it has all of our names, the date, and Sweener Builders. So this plaque will be installed on the very front center of the portico chair, and it will live under our AZEC trim till the next guys take it apart and they get to see one of the marks that we left on this building. Our installation process for this AZAC trim will be the Cortex fasteners with the matching bungs. and then we will also be biscuiting. And a 
detoxing all of our joints. One of the main benefits of using AZEC trim is when you're in a situation like this, you can actually bend it to match without using heat. Sometimes for a tighter radius, you'll need to use heat. But with a project like this, our radius is large enough to where the AZEC will just naturally adhere and bend right to the shape that we want it. And we'll use our Cortex fasteners to drive it home and really maintain that nice, consistent radius. So now that we've got the curved beam structure in there, it's all epoxied, we improved much of the existing components with lag screws, framing material that they just didn't have when they originally constructed it. It'll last at least another hundred years. But it was a really seamless process from, you know, kind of in the field problem solving to create this beam structure that you know, once we put it back up, it just slipped into place and it was quite successful. Thanks for watching another episode of Sawdust. Hope you enjoyed that piece on the Port Cachere rebuild. Obviously, we're super proud of it. The guys are super proud of it. So give us a like, drop a comment, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you on a future episode of Sawdust where we deliver extraordinary.